Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neil and I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're gonna talk about Netflix and we're not gonna talk about cuties. Hopefully not. Hopefully, Hopefully not. that's not one of the, the things we're going to talk about. Yeah, so Netflix is going all in on animation. They announced that they're going to release six, six original animated features every year. Hoping that one of them is not Cuties the Animated Series. Cuties the Animated Series. Oh my gosh. So Netflix, they're, they're shaping up to be, I'm going to be honest, they're shaping up to be the only like legit competition I think Disney has in the animated space because even DreamWorks has kind of dropped off. They're not right. doing as much as they used to. And, you know, Netflix is actually doing uh, pretty okay during the shutdown because everybody's watching Netflix. Now, this is Netflix's own things, not like they're, they're teaming up with somebody like DreamWorks and, and releasing. That is my understanding. Okay. So they, they are uh, working with other animation studios, but I think they're, they're co-funding these. So we're going to talk about this before we get into it. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, we're at almost 150,000 mm -hmm. subs, so thank you for the support. We do talk a lot about the animation industry, about comics, about anime, and all that jazz. And um, we've been keeping an eye on Netflix because as much as we didn't like Cuties, they've been putting out some pretty decent animated movies. Right. Klaus is amazing. Klaus is, and they mentioned Klaus. Klaus is absolutely amazing and they are pulling uh some pretty you know top shelf talent away from disney in fact the team that worked on klaus they had worked on disney productions mm -hmm. and they've got glenn keen working on a movie right. now too which is coming out later this month and um you know it's it's very telling that disney people are going to netflix now instead of staying with disney right well it's because netflix has money yeah, they're like the only the only game in town that has um, money. If I were going to be honest, I think that's probably part of it. And I think because you notice how so many people with Disney have to leave over creative differences. Creative differences. And uh, and and having had you know been in and around some of that stuff, I think sometimes ideas get crossed and end up with people even though they shouldn't because you sign a paper saying that you won't see them if, if ideas suddenly appear in one place where they shouldn't have. Um, you know what I'm saying without saying? Yes, I know what you're saying without saying. That, they, that, some things might be appropriated and you might not always get the credit or the... Uh, that Disney tends to sort of uh, uh, think of all ideas as being theirs, even if they're not. Well, then we're also hearing that a lot of these projects, um, unless it's a special deal made with them, they don't necessarily own them. Right. And I, I don't know what the, the particulars are at Netflix. I don't know if you know some of these productions are owned by the studios. And Netflix is just sort of the, uh, I guess, the publisher, the uh, distributor or what. But this came up on Cartoon Brew, and it's interesting because just a couple days ago, they also announced that they were leasing a huge, huge building in Burbank uh, to house their, their animation. So they're animating in actually in the United States? Uh, I think they're animating all over the world, but they're, they're, they're leasing. part of them are being animated in the United States. Yeah, leasing a big oh, building. That's good. There's jobs. That, that, that's a plus. Uh, so in Burbank where, you know, again. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little concerned of what we're going to get. Yes. If they're hiring in Burbank. I'm not trying to be a dick, but I totally am concerned. What I'm really worried is we're going to get more of this shit instead of things people actually want to watch. I'm just going to flat out say it. The magical power of my birth control pills and my effing bong. Um... If you want to out Disney Disney, and my understanding is they want out Disney Disney on family. This ain't it. Yeah, well, this is sci-fi. Now, everybody's everybody's uh, going all in on, on animation now. Sci-fi is doing more adult uh, style. Which is fine. If it's an adult thing and it's its own thing and it's not, you know, geared at kids, that's fine. Right. Uh, it might be cool. Um, yeah. I, it's not my thing. Nah. And that's fine. It's something new. I will give them that. Even though it's clearly a rip of a Sailor Moon, I will give them that it's something quasi new and it's targeting a, a certain audience, and they're very clear about that. You know, I'll give them that. But if Netflix wants to compete with Disney, they're going to need to do family centered things. And I, as my understanding that's what they were going to do. Right. So Netflix is going to release six original animated features, says uh, co CEO is that Ted. Shows or movies? Uh, movies. Oh, okay. Movies. Okay. Says co-CEO Ted Sarandos. Sarandos. Uh, if you think Netflix is producing a lot of animation, you ain't seen nothing yet. This is coming from Cartoon Brew, because which I'm not going to link to because YouTube struck us last yeah, time. Yeah, even though we're trying to give them credit where credit's due, we always try to. But you can read the article there. Yeah. So anyway, he had an interview in Variety originally. He said, our animation ambition right now is not just to step up and be as big as someone who's doing it today. 
we're on a path to be releasing six animated features per year, which no major studio has ever done, on top of the very healthy slate of animated series. Okay. Hmm. I just ask that you make sure they're quality, because I, I've got. I, I'm concerned about that. I I am too, and we're gonna talk about that because they're they're making some budget cuts, and there there have been some quality series that they have chopped because of expense. And I'm like, well, if you think that's expensive, like the Dark Crystal, right? Age of Resistance. If you think the Dark Crystal's expensive and most of the expense was up front to build the puppets and the yes. props and all of that, another season wouldn't have been as expensive, then what kind of shows are we talking what about? What quality of shows are we right. going to get? Uh, he added, the way we think about those things is not to say, well, how do we do it like someone else has done? Because no one's ever really done most of these functions at the scale we're doing. Well, good luck. I mean, that's cool. Yeah. I, I, I respect that. I think that's awesome. And the only way you could do that is to really have a trusted team who will make decisions and take them seriously and own them. Uh, he says, the idea of six animated features from a single company is completely unheard of in the animation industry. Consider that Netflix only released its first original animated feature last year, Klaus. Which was amazing and deserved the award it didn't get. Y yes, it did. Klaus was phenomenal. I mean, I'm going to tell you, Netflix, you, you that was a good one. Good but, choice on Klaus. But they had former Disney people right. working on it. Now, they had Willoughby's, too, which was, that was very, good. very good from my yeah, understanding. Yeah. I don't really know much. Oh, Over the Moon. Yes, I did see a thing about it. It looks really cute. Yeah, I saw that. This is Glenn Keane's. Oh, really? Yeah, it looks really good. Which you can tell. You look at the trailer and you look at the, the character design, especially the eyes. That's like his thing. Like, you can tell a Glenn Keane face. Mm -hmm. But, again, he's one of Disney's top animators of all time. You know, he's, he's legendary in animation circles. And he's working for the enemy now. I just want to point out something that I like that I see in this write-up. Go back up. You, you went past it. The protagonists are Chinese and sometimes behave accordingly, as their producers have stressed, but the film's drive for cultural authenticity is delivered within a narrative framework. That's distinctly Disney-esque. So basically they're saying they're, they're, they're delivering cultural um, authenticity and diversity, but they're not, they're putting it as part of the narrative. They're not making it like, did we mention? Oh my God, have we mentioned? By the way, did we mention? You know, it's, it's gonna, it sounds like it's gonna be organic. Yeah, which, I, I mean, we do see that occasionally in, in Disney or Pixar movies. I mean, Coco, I think, was... Oh, Coco was fantastic. Coco was a good example of that. If you didn't um, cry over Coco, I question I question your emotional whatever, because I don't care who you are, you'll cry over Coco. Coco is, yeah, it's very happy, sad. Now, the thing about Coco, though, and since we're talking about Chinese, is Coco was actually allowed to play in China, even though it dealt with the afterlife. Because I guess it did it in such a way that they felt, I guess it was it was universal. It wasn't uh, ham-fisted. It wasn't scary. I it think was, it was an idea of ancestors and family, which is yeah. something they are also very, you know, strongly believe in. Um, but, they, you know, they did such a good job with some of these other things. And this looks great. So I, if it's stuff like this, I'm for it. If it's stuff like, you know, if it starts to be cheap and done quickly and picked by certain things for certain narratives, I am against it. I'm just going to flat out tell you. Um, but I am concerned, like you said, the birth, yeah, you get my birth control pills, you got problems. Um, I am concerned that if they think, like you said, uh, age of resistance for Dark Crystal right. is too expensive, I worry what that means for some of these shows and features. Yeah, so let's, let's talk, because I, I'm wondering if they're not, because uh, we're, again, we're already seeing them cut budgets and, you know, they're, they're leasing a building. I guess we'll talk about that real quick. They're leasing a... They didn't uh, buy it, though. They're leasing it. Leasing it. it. That's much more responsible. It's the most aggressive move into a territory dominated by its rivals in Burbank. I, do appreciate, I do appreciate that, though. The tenacity? I do. I, I, I do appreciate that. So this is Netflix's first dedicated animation studio. So they're... I, I kind of think that. I think that's funny. I'm sorry. I just do. It's like, I'm going to piss on this building. You know? Yeah, it's we're going to move into Burbank, which I is... I like it. That's Disney's, you know, turf. You're moving into Burbank, you know, Warner and Disney, and they're going to move in. I appreciate the spunk. And they're going to go buy the, or lease this massive building, and it is an animation studio. Uh, 60,000 60, square feet. 
for two years. And I think about how cool that is, and I appreciate their spunk, and I remember cuties, and I'm like, what the hell were you thinking? Anyway, yeah. and then my, then my, then my you know, appreciation is w- w- wavers. Well, la, 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 wavers. Yeah. <laughs> I can't speak. Wah, 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 wavers. I uh, needed more coffee. So Netflix's first three AMA features have been solid efforts. In the case of Klaus, a technical marvel. Yes, gosh, it was amazing. Uh, films have also been relatively safe entries in the family film genre. Uh, that should change with the studio. Uh-oh. Oh, now this is Here we go. Uh-oh. Here we go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That should change with the studio's forthcoming slate. Judging by the titles, they have already been announced, including uh, Richard Linklater's Apollo 10 and a Half, A Space Age Adventure. Uh, Del Toro is doing okay, Pinocchio. Okay, that actually intrigues me. Del Toro I, I doing Pinocchio. I Del Toro have done Haunted Mansion, Disney. That would have been awesome. If they'd done a Haunted Mansion, a Haunted Mansion movie by Guillermo Del Toro in stop motion. Like Coraline or something that would have been freaking I don't amazing. Know, the Toro with a Pinocchio that intrigues me. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, we have my father's dragon and Wendell and the Wild. So Cartoon Brew understands that the unannounced slate is even more diverse and includes more women directors as well as less established feature directors. Well, Netflix. Speaking of, of women and who tell stories. <laughs> By the way, we have several pitches if you're ever interested in seeing them. I mean, I figure I might as well make the, the you know, it's probably <laughs> like pissing Won't in you. the wind. But, you know, I figure I might as well take the opportunity. If you ever want to look at them, let us know. Continue. Yeah, well, we 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 took them to task for cuties. I, I don't think they're going to. Everybody call. took them to task for cuties. Everybody took them to task I still don't know what you were thinking there. I don't know. Uh, the amount of features is possible because of a strategic decision that Netflix made about its animation division early on, and that was to forego a house style in favor of a diversified approach to technique and content. I do agree with that. I do too. Because the, the problem with Disney and, and likewise DreamWorks you know, basically owning the animation scene is a very homogenous yeah. style, you know, and even I Pixar. Agree. I, mean, I think Pixar that's why anime does so well. Yes. It's because it's, it's, it's very diverse and it's not all by the same people. So yeah, I, I agree with that also. Okay, this is interesting. So this answers your question. While Netflix animation is the entity that oversees the production of the films, many of the films are being primarily developed at other studios around the world with relatively less top-down oversight than the traditional US studio. So it basically would be like, Hypothetically speaking, Geeky and I do our own show for Disney, but we we do it out of Pittsburgh, and then Disney runs it on... Or do our own show for Netflix, but we uh, do it out of Pittsburgh. Right, we do it out of Pittsburgh, uh, so you get that, that Yinzer of... flavor. Yinzer. <laughs> yeah, you know... It tastes like Yinzer and Yingling. That's, that's, that's right. what so it would... I don't I don't drink Yingling, but okay. I do. I, like I don't Yingling. like beer. Sorry. I like Yingling. I know it's cartoon brew, but I don't like brew. Anyway, continue. Anyway, uh, with relatively less top-down oversight than the traditional U.S. studio system where every stage of production is closely supervised, that might actually, that could work. I'm going to be honest. I I, I like that. That sounds almost like they're a publisher. But yeah, it sounds like they're trusting their people more too. Like we're going to hire, we're going to work with the best people. We're going to get Glenn Keane. We're going to get the people that did Klaus. I forget the studio. We're going to get Clownfish TV. Um, <laughs> People are mad at us right now, I'm sure. How very dare you. Uh, the downside to this, at least from a business perspective, is that Netflix's feature animation output will be less consistent than that of a traditional studio like Pixar or DreamWorks. Right. Um, they have a reduced opportunity to develop the kind of lucrative franchises that are the bread and butter of other studios. Yeah, but fran- some of the problem is that they, say if they, go, they, they bank on that franchise. They bank on that toy sale money. Toy and, Story money? Yeah, Toy Story money. This is they safe. bank is on the Toy Story money? And yeah. then they overstay their welcome. <laughs> they so. bank on that Frozen money. We didn't need Frozen 2. We didn't need Toy Story 4. Uh, there's also a tremendous potential upside, which is that Netflix's films are guaranteed to be far more diverse in voice, tone, and target audience than any other U.S. studio. What I want to see, I'm going to be honest, because I was re-watching a little bit of Fantastic Planet the other day. Because people were talking about it on Twitter. And if you've never seen Fantastic Planet, you need to watch it. It's a French uh, sci-fi animated movie from like 1973. It's all done with paper cutouts. It's weird as hell. It, but it's it's a cla- it's considered a classic. It was groundbreaking at, at the time. You don't see those like adult animated movies like that anymore. You don't see movies like Rock and Roll anymore. Right, right. You know. Um, and that was something that was very 70s and 80s. And I know we had John Celestrion who had worked on rock and roll. And that was a great conversation because that was a specific period in time where, 
you know, animators were allowed to experiment and they were allowed to do different things and you don't see that. And I'm wondering. Well, maybe instead of rebooting everything that's already been done and, and pissing all over it and ruining it, maybe you, if you really want to get that, that 80s age of, you know, exploration age of groundbreaking new things, maybe you should just open the doors to let people make new things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think this is, is potentially a good thing, uh, you know, uh, from, you know, dealing with animation. I mean, Netflix it, does it, seem to be where it's at. But. It has a very strong potential to go completely down the, the other way, too. I'm not going to lie. It depends on what's picked because it depends on what the goals are. If the goals are to truly just do good stories and put good stuff out there, okay, great. But the goals are to, to try to, you know, double down on po politics and agendas and, and stuff like that. It's going to go down the shithole. I'm sorry, but it is. Well, here's the thing too, because a, a lot of the animators now are coming from... Why is there a naked dude standing in the middle? I, I don't out? know. I'm going to... We're, we're talking about different animation studios and um, this is a sponsored post, but you know, talking about how to work in animation during a pandemic. And I've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. I want to see more animation studios pop up all over the country, all over the world, because everything is centralized in LA. It's all centralized right. in Burbank. Time to fight back. And the most experimental cartoons, again, going back to, you know, the 70s and 80s. We had a lot of French and European Give cartoons. Uh, Canadian. Rock and Roll is Canadian. Yep. Uh, we had Ralph Bakshi, who just kind of, like, did his own thing. And we don't have that because, you know, it has been. Everything's been locked down in Burbank. So to have Netflix be like, yeah, we're going to move to Burbank, I'm like, this could potentially just be more of the same. Same people coming in from CalArts. That's what I'm worried about. Pitching their movies. I'm just going to say straight up. That's what I'm concerned about. You know, We're just going to get more of the same, the same look. Everything looks like Steven Universe 2.0. Yeah. It's going to be the same sense of humor. I'm sorry. By the power of my birth control pills, I'm going to transform into a magical girl. Really? It's magical because and, she can't get knocked up. I, That's the magic. I'm surprised that she, I'm surprised they went there because that means she's straight. So, you know. Well, um, yeah. I mean, unless she's got some kind of, you know, irregular cycle that she needs it, but if she's chewing up that many damn birth control pills, she's going to have needs to call, you know, she's going to need to call someone <laughs> for help. Um, well, she's going to she's gonna need a hospital. But it's just like, I, I'm really afraid it's going to go there. And I really want, I want the, I want animation to do better. I love, I think people love anime. Mm. And manga because they're allowed to do new things. They're allowed to push boundaries. Um, they're allowed to try new visual, like with Demon Slayer and the way it looks and, and it, how interesting and, and everything it is. They're allowed to do that and it's actually encouraged. And yeah. here it's like uh, you have to either fall into one or two camps. You have to be part of the studio and do whatever like Disney wants. Or you go out and be like, you know, I'm going to go be all about diversity and check boxes. And I'm going to be all this and that and rebooting the hell out of everything like Thundercats, Roar, and she -Ra. And then when people don't like it, it's because they're bad people, not because maybe my stuff sucks. Um, those are the two, those are the two sides you have. And I want to see more like anime where you actually have good stories, diverse characters, um, really cool situations, scenarios, beautiful art, and it's all done well. That's what I want to see. Good stories with good characters and pretty art. Damn it. <laughs> so I gotta, I gotta wonder, you know, how much just, uh, you know, how this whole thing is going to work. Like is Netflix actually footing the bill completely or are these studios coming up with funding on their own and then they're... We don't know. That's the thing. And that's kind of like this whole situation with the Dark Crystal, you know, again, when they say, hey, we're going to spend all this money, we're going to go rent this place, we're going to do all these movies and all that. And I'm sitting here thinking, I know what an animated feature costs. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Dark Crystal was a very expensive show. But again, all those costs were up front to build the, the original puppets and the sets right. and all that. Right, so that's already taken care of. Right, but they canceled that. I know, because it was too expensive. Because it was too expensive. That's what I'm worried about. So, uh, you know, maybe, maybe there's some coding in here. Maybe the reason they're saying they want to work with people all over the world is that they're cheaper. Mm -hmm. I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, well. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Well, we know that, that, that certain styles that come out of California lend, you know, ease of animation where it could be quicker. And it can be more flash and, and you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm thinking that what I'm reading into this is they're looking for, you know, six theatrical quality movies. And But I think they need year. to do, and they're talking about their series, animated series, too. Well, if you're going to step up your movies, step up your animated series, too. Yeah. Um, and this was a, a travesty, what happened to, to Age of Resistance. Uh, so anyway, just, just a side note here. Quibi was a complete failure. 
Is that what he said? I can't remember how you pronounce Quibi, it. Quibi, I, I, I don't, Queefy? I don't know it's what the queefy. hell it is. It's not Queefy. I can 100% tell you for sure however if you eat that many birth controls you might go queefy don't know never done it oh my pills. god that's gonna be netflix's new series the adventures of queefy you know that, that's when cuties grow up they become queefies. oh know. my god cuties 20 years later okay i can't keep saying that word so let's just it's not, not a use bad it. word or just i know yes but i know what it means and so it's just queeby reportedly fails to sell its ass to app assets to apple warner media okay because everybody's running out of money uh apple doesn't want it because what's the point what is Quibi? i don't even know what the hell quibi is it's like a little short it's called youtube but it's like not little, youtube but little, little little bites that you can watch when you're on like your way to work except no one's on those things to go to work so yeah, it was it, really it's, bad timing. it was bad timing i mean um, i don't really know much about i don't watch it I've never There's watched too much it. competition. Yeah. And it's bad timing, I think. I don't know. I can't speak to the quality of the of the shows. I just know that 2020 was not the right year. No. And and but this is the thing. We're going to see like streaming service uh Armageddon here. And I talked about it a little bit before in other videos where uh there were analysts out there saying that, you know, these streaming services are going to have to combine to survive. And there's so many and they're starting more. They got, you know, Peacock and They're going to form Ultron. They are. Um, I think what's going to happen is, I mean, obviously, I don't think Netflix is going anywhere. They're the 800-pound gorilla. Um, but I think Disney Plus isn't going to be the lo long term. I don't think it's going to be the big hit that they think, especially if the company is running out of money. If they're not going to start putting more content out, it's not. HBO Max, I'm impressed as hell with their content. But the fact that it's not on Roku and Amazon. Yeah, that was huge. a yeah, I, guys, Warner Media. That was not a smart thing. You really need to fix that. Anyway. But they're they're cutting back on stuff too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so I think what's gonna happen is we're gonna have a lot of people from like Warner and uh, you know Disney and all that coming over to Netflix if they're throwing money out there for you know animated movies and junk. But um, I'm worried that they're gonna fall into the Disney trap too, where it's like okay, we're the Netflix is the only game in town now. You got to come Netflix. Yeah, that's the thing. Is. It, that could very easily become that. That's true. Yeah. So um, I don't know. We're gonna keep uh, keep an eye on this situation, but um, Netflix is getting getting hot and heavy in the animation. All right. Too bad they didn't rethink Cuties. Too bad. Yeah. Before a lot of people canceled. <laughs> that is. Damn it, Netflix! Like I was so pissed about it. I'm like, damn it. We kept praising Netflix, like Dragon Prince is amazing and it Klaus is. is amazing. Yes. And, uh, you know, we've heard good things about that. Was it Kipo and the Wonder Beast? I'm watching I it, have to watch it. I, I hear really good things. I mean, all this stuff makes up for Shira, right? But then you turn around <laughs> and you're like, hey, let's do family animation and also cuties. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that was not like, smart. Uh, okay. Anyway. Anyway, we're going to wrap this one up. Again, if you're looking for a great pitch done by a woman, you can give me a call at any time. Thank you. She is a woman. I can verify. Well, it's done by both of us. But we'll just say it's done by me because that apparently being a male, that is a problem. So We'll put your name first. That's right. That's what we always do. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> I do. Does. That's how he I does. do. So I don't feel bad. No. No, I do that too because I know how the game's played now. You got to Well, think. whack when you started doing that, it was just so I wouldn't feel bad. Well, I anyway, love you and I I want you to I was feel just the writer. You were not just the writer. Anyway, you're more than that. I am. I'm the, I'm, I'm I'm more much more. Okay, you're ready to wrap this up. We're going to wrap like, it up. I don't care. Please subscribe for That's more right. pop culture news, views and rants. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.